Hello, this is Isaac, and this is part 5 of building a registration system with React Native. Today I'm going to show you how to manage the user state. If you didn't watch the previous part, go ahead and watch it, otherwise this part won't make any sense to you. So let's get into it. So we have a couple of users to play with in the database. So what does it mean exactly to manage the user state? So we need to know if the user is, if the user is logged in or not. Now you keep in mind that the API is stateless. The API only serves as the gate for getting data or posting data. But by no means it will tell you if the user is logged in or not. This is our job to define it in the client, in the mobile app. Okay, so how can we do that? So we know that the user, when he logs in or registers, he has the access token, right? And I already showed you that once he logs in, we're going to store the token. So he's logging in and on success, this does store token and pass him to the home view. And this is the method. So what we can do, this is our root view, right? When the user first is launching the app for, when the user is launching the app for the first time, we can't know if he's logged in or not yet, right? Because so first it will upload this root view, right? But what we can do here, the first thing we can do is to verify the access token. We, we can do a, a little bit of checking, right? So we can check the async storage, see if there's a token over there, and then verify it against the API. If we're getting back a success response that the access token is valid, then that means that the user is logged in. And instead of redirecting him to the login page, we will redirect him to the home page or view whatever you want to call it. So this is very simple to do it. And uh, we're going to use a, a lifecycle component. Uh, component will mount. Invoked once, both on the client and server immediately before the initial rendering occurs. So this is good for us because we want a method that works as fast as possible. So we will navigate the user in case he's logged in to the home view as fast as possible. So we can do like component. Uh, will component will mount and we'll simply want to get the token first right because we can't do anything without the token so let's write that method so get token and again we need to import the async storage and we need to set the constant variable the access token because we're going to use this. This is the key, right? This is the key and we want to get its value. So if you remember, we're going to use the async syntax. I need to prefix it. And we're going to use try. And if it fails, we're going to use catch. And I'm just going to console.log that something went wrong. And over here, we're going to fetch an error. And what we're going to do here is simply let uh, define the access token variable equal to await. Uh, I missed that. Async storage dot get item. And we're simply going to add in the constants. Now, it's a, it's a little bit, well, it's not tricky, but we can't just count on this error to work, right? Because this is serious stuff what we're doing here. We are checking if the user is logged in or not. If we make a mistake, who knows what's going to happen? We, he's going to have access to data that he's not supposed to have access. So we might get an empty, empty value. So let's check for that too. If there's an empty value, um, it's lowercase. Because if we have an empty value, if there is no access token, then it will simply console.log token not set. Okay? But if we do have a token, then we verified already twice, right? First we are covered here in case there's an error, then nothing nothing's gonna happen. And in case there's an it's an empty value, we're also covered, right? Because nothing's gonna happen. By nothing's gonna happen, I mean we won't redirect the user to a view which he doesn't have which he's not supposed to have access to. And here we're simply gonna do 
this, the, oh, we can use the navigate actually in this case. See, I got confused here because technically we are redirecting him, right? But he also has the option to navigate, so I didn't know which proper name to use, right? I'm not gonna repeat myself just to change the name, so let's stick with navigate. But even though it's a redirect. So we wanna navigate him to the home view. That's simple, right? So this is the simple part, right? But we still need to verify the token, right? So before we do that, well, actually, no, we don't need to ver we don't need to navigate him to anywhere, right? We need to verify the token. It's my mistake. We first need to verify the token, and we will pass the access token. When we verify the token, if that went successfully, then we will navigate him. And because it's pretty long to write, it's not that long, but it's long enough to waste a couple of expensive minutes. I'm gonna paste it right here. Okay, so again, async await syntax ES7, it's getting the token as an argument because we're passing it right here. And so if token is verified, we will redirect the user to the home page, right? So yeah, I already have it here. Now this, this uh, URL, if you can take a look, it's getting a little bit weird right here, right? So first, because we are using the get method in this case, then we are not allowed to use the body to pass data. We're just gonna get an error. So this is how fetch works. And uh, my Rails app is expecting to receive the data in this format, session, and then access token. So this is just URL encoded, but this is what it means. So basically equal to this and equal to the access token. This is, this is what I'm passing in the URL because this is the Rails conventions in this case. Your backend, again, might be different. So this is it. So if again, we're getting a, a good response, then we're gonna handle it successfully and we're gonna navigate the user to the home view. And if not, well, not, he won't be navigated. So we're just gonna console.log the error. So this, let's test this. Let's reload. Okay, so we're getting some error. Let's test that out. Unexpected token at line 21. Okay, so line 21. Oh, capitalized if. See what happens when you type and speak. Don't do twice at the same time. I'm not a woman, what can I do? Oh, it's working already because I have a logged in user, right? How can I get rid of it? Well, first, just to prove to you that it's really working, if I take this out, then it's not gonna navigate, right? But we are navigating. And if I wanna console.log the response that comes from the database, so I can do it like this, response is, response and before I save it let me just clear the console let me just open it and clear it out okay it's pretty clear so let's save it response is verified right this is what I'm returning back from the back end so we are verified the user is verified he's logged in taken back to the view and this is what we did so we have one last step in managing the user state and the logout state. Now the logout state is pretty simple because we don't need to hit the API. All we need to do is to delete the token and redirect him back to the root. And then in the root, it will try to verify that token that doesn't exist and it will get an error back. And the user will stay there until he decides to log in again. So I'm gonna add here, we are hitting the home view. I'm gonna add the button, touchable highlight. This should be familiar. And on press, it's gonna call the on logout method. I already created it, so I'm just gonna copy it and paste it. I'm gonna paste both of them. Okay, and let's do it right here. I'll just put this above makes more sense. So the user hits the login button. Here it is. 
it hits the on logout method, and the on logout method calls the delete token method. And what the delete token method does is just removes the access token, which we already created here, the constant, and we need to import it, which we already did. And then we redirect him to the root. And if there's a problem, then we'll console.log this, right? So let's let's test this first. So we click log out. And let's see, we might have a problem. Something went wrong. Okay, so let's test it out, right? So we have the on logout button, right? We're binding to this. User clicks on the logout, goes to this method, and we want to remove the access token, and then we want to redirect to the root, right? But there is one problem, of course. We have no redirect method, so let's take care of that. Okay, let's copy this one. It should be exact, exact same, I believe. Redirect. Get the name. We're not gonna pass any props at the moment. We don't need it. And let's delete this one too. Okay, now let's check it. Okay, so it did remove the token, right? But it failed here. But it, but it did work technically because it's not redirecting me anymore to the home view again because it did delete the token. So let's. Let's log in again and log out. Let's log in. Okay, so now it's working. I refresh the app. It should, yeah, it will redirect me automatically. And if I log out, you see I'm logged out, right? So it is working. Now it's expecting to have the token, but yeah, we need to pass the token technically. But I'll leave it for the next part. It doesn't really matter. We don't really need it at the moment. So this is how we manage the state. Pretty simple. The API is stateless. So we verify the token every time the user launches the app. We do it in the root view because this, this is the home page. We use the component lifecycle, the component will mount, which is right here. No. That's in the root, actually. Component will mount. We get the token. If there is a token, if it's not an empty value, we then verify, right? Because we don't want to verify nothing. It won't make sense. We verify the token. If we get a valid response, and you've seen the response, we will get back verified. Then we navigate the user to the home view. And on the home view, all we need to do is to let him click the logout button, invoke the on logout method, which will invoke the delete token, and we just delete the token. So the API is stateless, so we don't need to call the backend for the logout process because we have nothing to verify. We only need to remove the access token. So this is how simple it is, right? It's not difficult at all. So if you have any questions, please comment below. Until next time, have a great day.